G'day everyone, Tim from the vMix here. In vMix 26 and beyond, we've added a new effects tab to your input settings, which will allow you to apply different effects to your inputs. On launch, this has two options, one for Gaussian blur and the other for LUTs or lookup tables. To add a new effect, just go into your input settings, go to the effects tab and then click on the plus button. Now I have an Ada PTZ camera here on my desk pointing to my new tutorial PC that I've just built and I'm going to be using this to demo some effects. So firstly, we need to go into the input settings of the input, and we can do that by clicking on the little gear icon in the bottom right hand corner. Then we just need to go to our effects tab over here. Now on this screen here, we can add a new effect by clicking the plus button here and then selecting the effect. And for example, I'm going to use the Gaussian blur first. Now, as you can see, that has now blurred my input. Now I can change the strength of the blur by using this slider across here. And I don't need to just blur the entire input. I can actually select a portion of my input to blur by using the crop option up here. So I can use this to just blur out a certain segment. Now I'm just going to blur out that power cable in the middle here, like so. So now you can blur out just that power section in the middle. Now I can rename this if I want to by double clicking on it. I'm going to call this power. And so now I know what I've blurred out. Now, if I want to switch this off and on temporarily throughout my production, I can use the little eye icon here to turn it on and turn it off. If I wanted to remove it completely, I would select it and then click the minus button right here. Now I can add multiple effects to my input. It doesn't have to just be a blur, but I'm going to show you another blur as well. So I'm going to select this blur here. Let's make it a little bit blurrier. And what I'm going to do is just crop out the hammer. So I'm going to move this over like so. And so now I have the hammer cropped out in my production. Now, if I want to remove that, like I said, it's just selected. Then click the minus button and it deletes it. And to affect these changes here, I just select here. And now I can make changes on my effect again. The Gaussian blur effect is extremely GPU intensive. So a blur may use a significant portion of GPU resources, even on a higher end graphics card. So you will absolutely need a fairly new dedicated NVIDIA graphics card if you plan on doing any real-time blurring in vMix. Now, if you are going to be using the blur for a background image for, say, a green screen or something like that, it's going to be way more efficient to blur it before bringing it into vMix. So blur it in a program like Photoshop or a free editor like GIMP or Paint.net, and that way you're not going to have to use the blur in vMix. The image will already be blurred. Warning! Blur effects should not be relied on for obscuring sensitive items or people's faces. Adjustments elsewhere in vMix may cause the blur effect to temporarily deactivate at any time, revealing whatever is underneath. End warning. So vMix has supported three-way professional color correction since version 21, as you can see over here on the color correction tab. But we have had a lot of people continue to ask for LUT support, so here it is. Now, we need to go back to the Effects tab in order to add a LUT. So what we need to do is go back here and then click the plus, then click on LUT. Now, in order to apply a LUT, we need to browse for it and add it to our production. So what we can do is then click the Browse button here, then select a LUT. Now, these are some of the ones that come with vMix that we can add just for an example. So I'm going to select this CP1 here. Now, it does support PNG and cube variations of LUTs. So I'm going to click that and then click open. Now, as you can see, it has now added our LUT to our production. Now we can change the strength by using the slider here on this input. I can crop it again, so I'm only using a certain segment. So let's just say I go half, so I can do a 50-50 before and after type thing. So this is what we've got here in our production. So we now have a LUT and we also have a blur applied to this particular input. So what you might want to do now is apply these effects that we have here to a different input. So I'm just going to close this down now and go over here to my camera, go to my input settings. And then what I can do from this section is go to the copy from option in the bottom left. And then I can choose to copy the effects from a certain input. So from the drop down, I want to use this Ada camera here and I want to bring the effects across. So I'm now going to click OK. So as you can see, I now have my blur down here and I have my 50-50 sepia. Now I'm just going to get rid of my power blur here, click it, delete it, and so now I just have my sepia, so I'm sad over here, and then I'm happy over here. That's how you can quite easily copy across different effects from one input to another. 
Now, as I mentioned before, multiple effects can be added to your input. Now, they will appear in the list that you have here on your effects panel, and they're processed in order from top to bottom. So let's just add another LUT effect here to show you an example of what that looks like and how that's processed. So let's go with inverted here. So that's currently being processed last, and I can use these arrows on the side here to move that up to the top. So you'll see there is a bit of a difference as I move it up and they're processed in a different order. So as I moved it up there, you can see that it is changed. So that means that the inversion is now being processed prior to that sepia tint. So that's a quick example of those two effects. Now you will notice that there is a bit of free real estate down here. So if you do have a good idea for an effect, feel free to leave us a comment about something that you might like to see appear in here. Now I will preface this by saying that we definitely need a good reason to implement something. So just explain how you would use it in your production or perhaps you're using it in other software already and something you'd like to see in vMix. Now, as you can imagine, we get a lot of requests for this type of thing. And typically we need to make sure that the effect isn't going to make vMix explode. So because people pay for vMix, they expect for it to work every time. So we need to make sure that it's reliable. So a lot of the features that we get requested aren't quite doable without you know, causing some kind of stability issues. So we need to make sure that it's actually feasible. So if you do have any questions about vMix or input effects, send us an email via the support page on vmix.com. We can't answer any sort of technical questions via YouTube comments, unfortunately, because we need technical information from you. As this is a vMix 26 feature, you will need to have that version of vMix for it to work. If you're not sure whether you can get a free update instantly, then you can just check out the link on our website. Or if you'd like to update vMix, you can pay $60 US. If you want to try out vMix for free, feel free to go to our download page and use our free 60-day trial of vMix Pro. For more information about effects, check out the help guide that I've linked in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll stream you later.